Benjamin Franklin said that only a virtuous people are capable of freedom. And John Adams, he says, our Constitution was made only for moral and religious people. Let's think about whether we are a moral people. And let's think about it with just a few questions, because I think at the root of our problems, ladies and gentlemen, is immorality in our country. Suppose I saw an elderly lady painfully huddled on a heating grate in the dead of winter in downtown New York. She's hungry. She needs some shelter. She needs some medical attention. And, and I suppose I walk up to one of you and using intimidation and threats demanded that you gave me two hundred dollars. Having taken your money, then I purchased some food and shelter and medical assistance for the lady. Now, the question I ask you, would I be guilty of a crime? I believe a moral person would say, yes, Williams, you'd be, you're guilty of a crime regardless of what you did with the money. You've committed theft because theft is taking the property of one person and giving it to another. Now, see, ladies and gentlemen, most Americans can agree with me. Now, here comes the hard part. Would it be theft? if I were able to get three people to agree with me to take your money? Would it be theft if I got 100 people to agree? What about 100 million or 200 million people to agree to take by force somebody else's money and give it to somebody else? Would it be theft? Or what if instead of personally taking your money to assist a woman, I got together with other Americans and asked Congress to use internal revenue agents to take your money. In other words, what is clearly immoral and illegal when done privately does not become moral when it's done collectively. And we can think of many examples of that. I mean, the Nazi Nuremberg laws, uh, uh, the apartheid laws in South Africa. Don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong, ladies and gentlemen. And when anybody call up and say, well, gee, Williams doesn't care about his fellow man. I personally believe that assisting one's fellow man in need by reaching into one's own pockets is praiseworthy and laudable. Doing the same by reaching in somebody else's pockets is despicable and worthy of condemnation. Now, our economic crisis in our country is a direct result of immoral conduct. That is, roughly two-thirds to three-quarters of our federal budget can be described as Congress taking the property of one American and giving it to another. Look at the three programs that account for nearly half of the federal budget. They are Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid. Then there are corporate welfare programs, farm subsidies, and thousands of other programs, such as food stamps, that take money from one American and give to another. Turns out 130 million Americans or 46% of us, receive handouts of one kind or another from the federal government. Look at what we're doing, ladies and gentlemen. We're not talking about ending immoral conduct by Congress, stopping Congress from taking what belongs to one American and giving it to another to whom it does not belong. We're talking about let's tax the rich, not even realizing that even if Congress imposed a 100% tax on the earnings of people who make $250,000 or more, it would keep the government running for only 141 days. 